Previously, we've designed this circuit right here. And the circuit is basically, we have a infrared LED and we have a infrared photo transistor here as well. So with these two slotted in, what we had is something that could detect infrared light coming from this LED. And we have these resistors just to limit the current flowing through it. We don't need to mind anything to the right. This is just for a different circuit. But for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna power it again. And the way that this works is linked below the like button in the playlist. It's one of the uh, lab videos that you could search, it's lab two. And so this is one that we're using with our, again, infrared LED and infrared photo transistor. So I've removed some of the cables that we connected last time just to clean it up a little bit. And now I just want to power it. And to power it, um, we can see that this red wire from the analog discovery is our power. So I'm going to take this jumper cable and I want to power this infrared LED. So I'm going to power it here. And in fact, since this whole rail is power, I'm gonna plug it in here and then plug it in here. So it is in the power rail and it's in the same column as this LED. I'm going to do the same thing for the photo transistor because we want this to be powered on as well. So it's going to look like that. Both of them are in the same column. Um, this one as the uh, resistor here and this one in the resistor here. Now what we previously did is we grounded these top parts. So this part up here in the same column as this infrared LED needs to go to ground because the current is going to flow through here, through this resistor, and then through here, and then in back into ground. Next what we did was we grounded the infrared the same way. And that works, but what if we want to test this? Well. An easy way to test this, and if we didn't have the scope or anything to see if it works, is we could put a LED in. And to put for, before we put the LED in, I'm going to put a current limiting resistor. This one is 330 ohms, I believe. And then we're going to just have an LED. I'm going to be using a blue one for this. We know that current flows into the anode and out of the cathode, so the longer leads the anode. We're going to plug it in here, and now we want to ground it. I just made a mistake. I realized that our grounding wire was going into the power wire. That would be really bad. So we're going to take this and my grounding rail here is going to be this bottom negative rail. And I'm going to plug it into here. So if we look at this again, the current is going to flow through the red wire and then it's going to go in here. It's going to go through the resistor into this infrared LED. It's going to have some infrared light that this phototransistor is gonna pick up. But then we are going to have the leftover current flow back into ground. And the same thing with this one. We're powering it through here. It goes into our uh, phototransistor to power it. And then it's gonna go through this resistor. And through this resistor, we are going to power our LED. So the positive side is this longer wire, the longer lead. We're going to take it and we're going to plug the longer lead into the same column as our resistor. So it's going to look like that. It's going to flow into the resistor and then we obviously need to ground the resistor as well. Or I'm sorry, the um, we need to ground the LED. So we're gonna take this wire, we're gonna plug it into the same column as the cathode, and then we're going to plug it into ground. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna power on the analog discovery two. And when we power it on, we should be able to see the LED light up. So powering it on and the LED has not lit up. And so what we can do is check our connections here. And it's that I had the, re the LED plugged in the wrong way. So I harped on that so much, but I plugged it in the wrong way. So before we unplug anything, by the way, we want to make sure that our analog discovery is turned off. So taking this LED and plugging it in the actual right way, we can just do so like this so now the longer lead is in the same column as our resistor and that is how it's supposed to look now we can power on the supplies and we see that we have our led lit up now it's not very bright and that is because our infrared and our photo transistor are kind of separated but if we were to bring them together we're going to see that more uh, current is going to flow through because this phototransistor is detecting more infrared light the closer it gets. 
So if we push it closer, it gets brighter. If we push it farther apart, it's not as bright. And what this is simulating is the current flowing through our infrared. If we have less current, there will be less light from this infrared. Therefore, the infrared sensor, this photodiode right here, or the phototransistor, will be picking up less light. And so that means less current will be flowing through whatever we have here. Right here, we just have an LED, but we could have so much more hooked up to it, and this could be part of an integrated circuit. And so that is just testing our infrared LED to the infrared phototransistor, which is a fork, kind of, from our previous project, which is where we built our octocoupler circuits.